Hi everybody, this is Innkeeper Gwen from Blessings on State Bed and Breakfast in Jacksonville, Illinois. I'm coming to you today to share a recipe that we've tried here at the Bed and Breakfast. It's quick, easy, pretty, kind of looks a little bit fancy. So it's a great recipe for Christmas time. I served it when the elves were here and we made it in a larger size. Today we're making it in a smaller size. So I said it's fancy, it starts with puff pastry. So you gather your flour and your butter and forget it. You know me too well. I'm not going to be making puff pastry today and rolling it out and layering the butter and letting it, no, it's not happening. Are you crazy? No. What I use is the famous Pepperidge Farm puff pastry in a box. And it's fabulous. It's just really a good item to use. They make little cups. I've impressed people with the little cups, with the little eggs or a little sausage gravy. And this is just the same thing except in a sheet. So I'll show you how I do it. I start with parchment and I do use flour just to flour the parchment paper. So I'm going to sprinkle a little flour on. The puff pastry comes out of the box in a two sheet pack. We'll just use one sheet now. If you were using both sheets, you would make one larger or several small. I'm going to end up with three small Christmas trees today. The small ones would serve one, maybe two, probably. And that's where we're going today. You want to keep your puff pastry cool, refrigerated until you're ready to use it. You'll lay it on a floured, I'm using parchment paper. You could use a cookie sheet, butcher block, whatever works best for you. I am going to sprinkle a little more flour on it. There is some flour on it when it comes out of the package. So you don't want to overdo it. But what I'm going to do is just roll this out till it's about one fourth larger than we started. And you'll want to pick it up every now and then and be sure it's not sticking. That will be very important later that it's not sticking when you start to put it on your tray. So I'm kind of shifting it over a little bit more to the middle of my paper and I'm going to keep rolling. This is kind of the fun and games. Now I'm going to fold it in half. This is not part of the original directions, but since I'm making the smaller size, I am going to go ahead and fold it. What we're going to do, you don't want to tear your pastry. So that's why we flour the paper underneath it. What I'm going to do with this pastry now is cut two Christmas tree shapes. And what we'll end up with is a third Christmas tree shape along the fold. So I can use that with the other part of the one that I'm going to make later. So I'm starting at the top. I'm just making a long, tall Christmas tree from the top using my sharpest little knife here. Right down to the point. So actually you'll see now we have three Christmas tree shapes. For the base, we'll use the scraps and cut the bases that we need. One for each with a spare. I have a prepared baking sheet. That just means that I have a baking sheet that I've coated with a little bit of spray to keep it from sticking. And I'm going to start arranging my Christmas trees now. Did you wonder why I have rosemary out here? This recipe calls for raspberry preserves and rosemary, fresh rosemary. We still have some. It's November in Illinois, but we still have some fresh rosemary in our kitchen garden. It's kind of big, bigger than it usually is. But that's fresh rosemary. I just chopped it and we're going to layer it in with the raspberry jam as we prepare this Christmas tree. I am using Bon Mama Raspberry Preserves. And for many years, I was ordering Bon Mama from the company direct or from suppliers and distributors. They sell it at Walmart. I can call ahead, make my order, go pick it up. I'm a happy girl. So these preserves are lovely. They're just a wonderful texture. 
and wonderful taste. And actually, they have gift packs. So if you do order from the company, you can order them for Christmas gifts for your friends, and they're really good. Little sampler packs that they can try. So I'm just spooning out some of those soft preserves. I'm adding a little bit of the chopped rosemary to my preserves. And that's what I will use to fill my Christmas tree. Tuck in one of the bases so that it sticks together nicely. And then you just top it with your preserves. And you don't want to go all the way to the edge because it's going to spread as it cooks and you do want to seal the edge before you get started. So you'll see that I'll kind of line it up and spread it along with my spoon, but at the same time try to keep some of those edges open so that I can form a seal. And if you need more, you can get more. So here we go. A little more raspberry. Well, that's a lot more raspberry, probably more than I needed. Here we go. A little more raspberry this time. And a little more rosemary to go with the raspberry. And we should be good. And I'm going to put a little bit on that base. I have a spare, so we're going to use the spare. Good planning, ha ha ha, can't fool me. And now, as I said, I've got a spare, so I'm just going to lay one of these over the top. Line it up the best I can without making a lot of movement. And then I'm going to start sealing the edges. So I'm just going to take it from the top, trying to not squish out that raspberry jam, trying to keep that raspberry jam inside, and then the fun begins. I'm going to show you one of my favorite kitchen tools. One of my guests, who was a football mom at Illinois College, said, you need a rocker knife. It's called a Nulu knife. I thought, what in the world is that? So I looked it up, and typically if you order it from Alaska, it comes with a walnut bowl that's square, the hollow in the middle. I got mine, a friend bought it from me at the Booze Butcher Block shop near my hometown. And you know, it means more to me because it came from Booze. And I think it's kind of a tourist trap sort of thing to buy them from Alaska. But if you've got somebody that's living there, have them send you one. This is the best tool ever. It's a rocker knife and the shape just allows you to rock, to chop or to cut. And in that little round bowl, you can put your vegetables in, and it's beautiful. It just really works beautifully. So I'd like to have nice straight lines here. So what I'm gonna do is use my Ulu knife and just go around and make cuts about one inch apart. Go up one side and go on the other side, and then we'll do the magic. I'm just, as you can see, kind of eyeing to keep the line in the middle, just sort of trying to keep that center line straight. I don't want to cut all the way through. So what I'm going to do now is start turning these pieces that I've cut. I'm just making a light twist in each one. You'll see that it shows the twist and you can see a little bit of the raspberry jam showing as I go along. There's a pretty one. That looks good. Having those ends sealed helps a lot to keep it together as you do the twists. Do the twists, get it? Okay, so that's my prepared pastry. I'm going to brush it with an egg wash, which is just an egg mixed with water. And I'm gonna put that on and that will help it be a nice golden brown as it bakes. And then we'll go for the oven. It will bake for approximately 10 to 12 minutes. Now I'll tell you the other day, there was a lot of commotion because for Elf's Weekend, we were all in the kitchen. We were all kind of cooking together, eating together. And as we got going, I noticed that it wasn't quite done. So I put it back in. And after a little bit, Joni says, mm -mm, Gwen, Gwen, you might ought to check that pastry in the oven. And it was a little brown. 
But I'm telling you, those three ladies ate all but the last piece, so I think it still turned out pretty well. But do watch it, do run the timer, do check it starting at 10 minutes, depending on the size. The 10 to 12 is really the directions for the larger size, so the smaller one will likely be done a little sooner. Keep an eye on it. You want it to be golden brown as it comes out. And that's what you have, the finished baked pastry Christmas tree. So our Christmas tree is out of the oven and we're gonna go ahead and plate it on one of my silver trays. I've collected several of these over time. We're going to use this one that was actually, I think, a prize or an award for someone. Has her name etched in the middle. Not anyone I know, but it makes a pretty serving tray. So I will tell you that for the blooper reel, we have me cleaning this thing off the tray, but I went ahead and got it done in advance. So take your time. It will not come off this easily. I'm just, true confessions. This has already been removed from the tray, but I'm gonna lift it up and place it on my serving tray. Now I talked about putting rosemary around it and the girls kind of discouraged it. Jenny said, and she is correct, anything you put on your tray to serve should be edible. So there will be no, I don't want you chewing tree trunks, so there will be no rosemary on the tray. But think of different things that you could put around this. Anything edible would make a lovely garnish. I would probably go with some color, red, green, white, possibly, maybe some gold. So those things will be the things that you'll use as you garnish your tray if you want to do that. And then when you're ready to serve, you can just slice it and serve slices to your guests. And it makes a lovely breakfast sweet, which is what I would call it, but it would also make a nice dessert.